Good afternoon and welcome back to the workbench where today it's uh, really freezing and it's about 8 degrees I think and I've uh, finally returned from about 4 weeks away from making a video I think because I wasn't here um, for a while and yeah I uh, took a little holiday in Japan um, for the first two weeks of June with a friend of mine and we had a bit of crazy fun and ran around on a ridiculous whirlwind tour of Japan. And it was quite fun and also quite exhausting and I sort of spent about two weeks recovering from it all. So, um, Yeah, it was good though and I uh, had a lot of fun but yeah, it's just sort of... And that's all happened and, and so I hadn't made a video for a while. Um, but yeah, so I'm back now and decided to do something. I've got a mouse here and I have a problem with it. It's got a, uh, a dodgy scroll wheel. Um, well, the rotary encoder for the scroll wheel is a bit dodgy. And here's some footage showing the uh, fault as I'm scrolling down through this data sheet. You can see that it, it occasionally will jerk back upwards, um, even though I'm scrolling down the entire time with the wheel. So it's uh, kind of like that song something along the lines of two scrolls forward and one scroll back and nobody scrolls too far like that <laughs> yeah anyway you get the idea the thing's broken something wrong with it so there we go so yeah it's a bit it's a bit wonky but you know as always Chinese sellers come to the rescue on eBay where you can buy a bunch of rotary encoders there's five of them for I don't know two dollars or less I can't remember but it was very cheap um, I got these from the most cheapest seller. Uh, I mean, you know, there's a bunch of sellers all selling the same thing. You buy them packs of five, packs of ten, packs of fifty, you know, the usual kind of thing. Um, I just picked the cheapest for five because, you know, I only need one. And it's a really cheap mouse, and who knows if these are even compatible. But yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, so replacing a rotary encoder in a mouse isn't a particularly interesting thing in itself, but. I wanted to take this as more of an opportunity to sort of say, well, okay, I've got this mouse, um, which I have no idea, I have no schematic for that or anything, and I have no data sheet for these or anything like that, don't even have a model number, no idea. Um, sometimes with uh, multiple sort of listing things on eBay, if you go to the most budget listing, they often have absolutely no information whatsoever, um, but if you go to a another seller that's selling the same thing for a higher price they will often have a data sheet um, or at least some basic information maybe some diagrams pinouts that sort of thing um, from what I could tell though none no no sellers at all had any sort of information on this whatsoever and um, so I basically have no idea uh, how these things how these things are wired up um, I'm gonna guess that they're probably the same as whatever's already in here um, because, you know, typically when you have something like this, um, there's often like a bunch of companies trying to manufacture the same basic device, um, and of course they all want to compete against each other, so it's advantageous to produce a product that has the same basic footprint, same pinout as your competitor, so that um, any customer that wants to buy your product or your competitor's product, they can just... Um, they can just do a drop and replacement with your part instead of having to redesign their board or, or anything like that. Um, so yeah, if you can uh, avoid anything like that, if you can produce an item that has the same pinout and same size and everything, and you can say, well, hey, our one's half the price, and you don't have to do any retooling or anything like that or whatever, then you know the company might be a lot happier to buy yours. They know that all they have to do is just swap it out for the previous part. Um, so yeah, often in a lot of cases you'll find that the pinouts are all the same, but um, obviously I have no idea if that's true or not. I'm going to guess it is, but who knows? Could be completely backwards, could be completely different. Um, it's no guarantee they are the same. So that's what this video is going to mostly be about: is sort of figuring out, trying to trying to figure out um, what the actual pinout of these things are, is, um, and sort of how you go about that. And uh, hopefully at the end of it, I'll have a mouse that actually works properly again. So I mean this is uh you know not a big deal. It's a what is it, genius net scroll one twenty. It's a, probably the one of the cheapest mice you can buy, but it's USB and it's black, so that's nice. Um like I always say, um I don't like white plastic anymore, beige it you know, it goes yellow in the sun, it's awful, so much prefer black plastic. It doesn't 
doesn't go horrible. Um, and USB is always nice to have, so yeah, I mean, even though it's a really basic budget mouse, it works fine, and if I can replace the scroll wheel encoder, then shouldn't be a problem. Uh, when you are repairing things, it is uh, it is very common that you'll find things without a data sheet and, uh, well, without a schematic at all. Um, finding a data sheet is usually more likely, uh, but not always the case. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's some people that will say, well, you know, if you don't have a schematic, you can't repair it, it's unrepairable. I think that's, it makes things harder sometimes, definitely, depending on the product, but um, especially for things like power supplies and amplifiers and things, I mean, you know, the basic designs are all quite similar, so um, you don't necessarily need a schematic for that. You can trace things out. It's harder, it takes longer, but, you know, it's it's not impossible. Um, for a computer motherboard or something, I mean, yeah, it's pretty hard because obviously you know it's going to be a several layer board six layers eight layers or even more and you know how do you how do you do that unless you x-ray it or something i mean yeah you, you can't you can't really um trace that out so yeah if you don't have a if you don't have a schematic for a motherboard and you need to do some really in-depth repair then yeah you're you're kind of stuffed in that sort of situation but um even then, I mean, you can get the pinouts of, like, the SIO chip and clock gen and stuff like that, and you can test to see if certain signals are there, and, yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it's not as good if you have a, than if you do have a schematic, but it's possible to do some sort of basic checks and, and sometimes repairs on them. By the way, these um, these uh, things were listed as 9mm. I have no idea what that meant. Um, they also had, I think, 11 or 13mm ones for sale. Although I measure these, the width of the case is 10 millimeters. Um, there's, there's nothing on these, no external dimensions or anything, pin spacing or whatever that would that comes to 9 millimeters at all. So I, I honestly have no idea where they get the 9 millimeter measurement from. Um, it could be something to do with the uh, maybe the size of the encoder wheel inside. I mean the plastic housing is, is closer to 9mm than anything else um, and the metal case that sort of wraps around that uh, brings it up to 10 maybe, well actually maybe it's um, to do with the uh, number of maybe number of um, encoder points or something on the uh, wheel I'm not an expert on how rotary encoders work but I imagine that a larger wheel would have more um, more points, higher resolution possibly, so, you know, maybe these are, uh, maybe that's the difference, and maybe if you use the bigger one, it'll scroll faster or slower, or, you know, how many degrees, or whatever, I guess, I mean, the thing is circular, it's, you can divide it up into segments, how many segments will scroll per degree, I don't know, I mean, does anyone care about that? I have no idea. So I actually just finished rendering the video, I just got the links, um, for these on eBay to put in the description, and I just realized suddenly um, what these dimensions are actually for. So we have, you can get ones 5, 7, 9, 11, 13 millimeters, um, and I just realized this wasn't the listing I actually purchased from, but just looking through this one, I just looked at the uh, the dimensions you see as you go through them, that we get different lead lengths and body lengths. So basically, I just realized that the height described is the distance from the printed circuit board um, from the uh, where this would sit on the board so this part here um, where the flat edge is and that goes up to the center of this hole where the shaft from the mouse wheel goes so the uh, dimension is is listed from here to here so um, yeah so you have to measure if you do want to replace one of these you don't know what height you need um, you need to uh, Measure your original encoder from the center of the shaft hole in the in the wheel part um, to the distance from there to down to the down to the board. I'm not sure why I didn't think of that before, but that's the answer. Anyway, um, rotary encoding things. Um, old mice, I've had the same problem with actually um, the scroll wheel being a bit weird, and in the older ones I've got. Um, the whole thing is made out of discrete components. You've got like an infrared LED and an infrared phototransistor and the wheel has all the little holes in it. 
Um, and uh, the problem I noticed with those was that uh, dust would get in between the LEDs and the wheel and stuff. You know, bits of dust would fall down through the top of the mouse and get stuck in there and stop the infrared beam from working properly or reflect it out in the wrong way and stuff like that. So um, those are easy to clean because you just clean the dust out and then it works perfectly fine again. But this one, I'm not sure. Um, this thing's all enclosed, sealed up, so... Um, I wouldn't expect that the one in here has got dust in it, but hey, I mean, maybe it does. Maybe, you know, it's kind of thing. It's like water gets in, but it can't get out. Um, or just cheap plastic bearings and, well, probably doesn't have bearings. It's some sort of sleeve with, you know, maybe a small amount of lubricant or not even any. And maybe the thing just wears out, um, gets a bit sloppy, the position suddenly, you know, doesn't line up properly with the... Um, the LEDs and all that, or dust, plastic dust gets in into the working somehow and blocks the light. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, just seems to be worn out or faulty in some way. Um, it's a pretty old mouse, so I'm not really surprised. Okay, so let's get this thing open and have a look and see if we can figure out what's going on. Um, so, you know, simple. Uh, thing. Mouse uh, opens with one screw. And this is quite common for a lot of mice. Although, what is uh, also common is uh, the little feet here. Often you'll have to take those off to find a screw underneath, or maybe even a sticker, but oftentimes it's just one screw or two screws at the back here somewhere. And then there's usually a clip at the front, um, where the front half clips onto the back half. Occasionally at the sides, but not usually. In this case it just uh, comes straight off, and there's the little uh, there's a little clip clip things here and those clip down at the front there um, so yeah it's a pretty basic design pretty simple um, you got the rotary encoder thing here and as you can see if I just grab one of the new ones um, you know it's a very similar sort of shape and design basic sort of idea I picked the 9mm one because you know, this is about 10, and I figured it was probably the closest match. Um, so, yeah, so pretty basic. You know, you've got your little microcontroller with infrared um, receiver thing in it. Um, and that does everything, basically. There's the, the LED. There's a laser mouse, obviously. If it was a ball mouse, you'd have the different stuff. But there we go, some micro switches for the buttons, and it's all really integrated. And, and yeah, I mean, for this particular thing, the mouse still works fine. Um, it's just the uh, just the mouse wheel that goes a bit funny. So um, yeah, so that just uh, plugs straight into here, and you can just take that out. I mean that uh, for a start. Let's see, see mechanically. I mean that does fit in there. So you know everything makes sense there. Um, so mechanically, it fits on the uh, thing. So that's good. All we need to know is just which pin is which. Um, and uh, just make sure they all line up, and if they don't, then you kind of have to, you know, cut the pins shorter and then reattach some wires and, you know, swap them round, basically. Um, something like that, but hopefully it just should just be a drop-in replacement. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, sort of just basically have a look at the thing and uh, come up with some sort of theory about how it possibly works. So, it has three pins, and with any device, um, of this kind of sort, this is integrated obviously, it's going to have possibly some sort of IC to uh, encode that data into a serial stream. So most likely it has a, a power pin, a ground pin, and a data output pin. Now that's my guess anyway. Um, could have some sort of weird... Uh, could have a ground and it could have two pins each for the LED. It could be multiplexed and they could pulse them and then read the transistor back from the same pins, but... Um, I doubt it. It's probably going to be all integrated with some little IC inside that just spits out some serial data. So, first of all, we just want to figure out, um, basically if we can figure out which, which pin is ground, which pin is power, um, and then we can probe the third pin and see if we get some sort of data stream out of it when we turn the wheel. Um, and that should be able to tell us what thing is which. So, um, first thing to note, obviously, is the uh, metal case. So of often what you get is the uh, metal case is connected to ground internally to the component as well. Um, so if you can find a, a pin on the component which uh, 
is connected directly to the case, and if you find that the case is connected to a ground uh, plane or trace on the board, then generally you can say that you know it's all the same thing, and that pin is going to be ground. Um, also, usually that pin is going to be connected to the same trace on the actual board. So, yeah, and they often do that just to uh, reduce interference um, coming out of the component or going in. Um, in this case, these pads don't actually look like they're connected to anything. So, I would say probably this thing is not grounded at all. It's just purely mechanical, structural thing, just to keep it in place when you're moving the wheel. So it doesn't break off or anything like that um, from what I can see so yeah let's ignore that we can uh, probe these pins here and check them against the uh, power rails on the uh, on the thing so what I can do is power this up plug it into a 5 volt source uh, I'm just going to plug it into a, a charger I'm not going to plug it into the uh, computer um, just in case you know if I slip with my probe or something, I don't want to blow up my USB port. Um, unlikely, but you know, if you're playing around with this sort of thing, it's best to, to try and isolate damage um, if possible, if something really bad goes wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got the uh, power connector here, we can trace that out and get the uh, get the thing to make sense. I mean, this uh, capacitor here, this looks like the uh, primary filter capacitor for the input. Um, this is connected directly across uh, these here, and then we got traces branching out from that to pins on this IC, and go down here to the board to the switches and that. So, um, yeah, this is this should, probably this is the uh, five volt rail, which means that this pin here, this uh, pin on this side, totally the five volts. Don't know ground, maybe the next one, the middle one, and this uh, this one goes directly to the to the microcontroller pin somewhere. So. It's probably the uh, output, but anyway, let's uh, let's probe that and um, have a look for sure. So if I can get a multimeter in the shot as well, hopefully, <laughs> I'm going to use this little tiny one because uh, it should fit quite well. Um, I'm going to put this on, you know, voltage range, 20 volts. Um, actually, no, I'm going to put this on uh, continuity first, or oh, just well. Diode, ah, low ohms range, that make more sense. Okay, so we touch those together, we get, you know, 0.5 ohms, 0.4 ohms, makes sense. So, um, if I uh, probe from this uh, case pin on this thing, so from one case pin to the other, obviously, we get continuity, we get, you know, 5 ohms, if I connect that to another pin, let's try this one, we get nothing, let's try this one, we get nothing, let's try this one, we get nothing. So the case is fully isolated from the uh, from the device. Now this is interesting because, you know, in some cases the replacement may not be isolated, you may actually have to take that into account. So for example, if this, uh, if this new one, if this case was actually tied to the ground pin, um, then you'd have to make sure that uh, these pads here are in fact not connected to um, anything else in the circuit aside from ground if that's uh, what's going on but as, as it stands these uh, pads here are actually isolated from the rest of the board so it wouldn't matter either way um, if that was uh, how that was how it was done but if I go to this capacitor over here so this is the negative side there this is a negative pin so I'd say this is uh, this is most likely our ground rail. So if I uh, probe, I'm going to guess this one is ground. Okay, we don't get uh, an obvious resistance there. Nothing there either. Now we got the capacitor charging up. So that's um, that's interesting. So this is possibly okay. This is the uh, positive side of the capacitor. It should be our five volt rail. If I probe here, so that pin there, that pin. That's definitely connected directly to 5 volts. These two, on the other hand, they are not connected directly to ground, so that's quite interesting. So maybe it is some sort of um, strange sort of multiplexed arrangement. Let's try a higher resistance to see what we get. So from ground to that pin, we get about 2K. Okay, and from ground to this pin, 
we also get 2k okay and what do we get from 5 volts to these it's about 1.6 1.6. Okay, that's interesting. So that um, gives us some idea anyway. Um, hey, resistance check, right? So we should see about 2k from these two pins to ground. So actually, if I uh, take the replacement one, making sure we have it around the same orientation. So if this was like that, then this top pin here. And that should be our 5 volt connection, and these two should be some kind of maybe I/O input output. Maybe it doesn't do a serial stream at all. Maybe it's uh, some sort of multiplexed arrangement. Hmm. Interesting. So if we uh, measure this, we get. Okay, hang on. We get point four to there. <laughs> Basically everything is connected to everything else. Which does not seem correct, does it? It really does not. Hmm. That's interesting. Where are these ones? You know, it's entirely possible this thing is actually completely fake. I wonder. I wonder if this is just a fake piece of junk, and whether or not the uh, whole thing is just a lump of metal. If we uh, check this one, it's basically the same thing. All these pins are basically connected directly to each other. Which doesn't make any sense. Okay. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull one of these apart. Open one of these up and see what's in there, because I want to know. I want to know if this thing is just a fake piece of junk. Because quite possibly it is. So let's see. Um, let's get a knife. This is the uh, easiest way to open these things. So slide a knife blade under these little tabs and uh, bend them up. You can do the same sort of thing with potentiometer as well. You can use a screwdriver as well, but knife uh, generally works a bit better. So let's have a look at this. Hopefully this is all in shot, because um, I'm using a different sort of camera mount than usual. And it's hard to look at the screen. But anyway, if we just uh, take that off. Now let's uh, squeeze that flat with a pair of pliers. Get that out like that. See, there we go, it comes off. Then we've got this little, um, 
Hmm. Okay. Cut that off. So that comes off like that. Then we got this little wheel thing. Okay, it's interesting. It's got some spring contacts. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe it's not fake. Maybe it's in fact a completely different design. Hmm. Or you know what? If I go with the resistance check back on this again, these should all be fully isolated now. Yep, they are not connected anymore. Ah. Okay. That's interesting. Maybe I've uh, completely confused myself. Okay, so uh, just to see if these things are kind of the same design as that, um, I'm just going to probe the two pins here and just see if turning this makes any difference. And if you actually notice, it doesn't matter how slow I go, Nothing changes. There's no sudden um, change at all. I can't get anything out of it. So that's interesting. If I try that with one of these, which I don't know if this is going to work, but if we try this on here, try rotating it slightly. Ah, yes, move one point. Seems to alternate between shorted and open circuit, so that makes sense. It's a really basic design. It's a very basic logical thing. We turn it one step, the two pins short, we turn it another step, they become open. Hmm. Okay, so either this uh, uses a comp well, obviously this uses a sort of a basic switch contact system. Um, this one may be something else. Maybe this one is uh, an actual IC inside, but then again, maybe it is not. I feel the only way I can uh, prove this is to take this one apart to see what's in it. Um, of course, if I do that, then this mouse will possibly never work again um, if I can't uh, replace this uh, encoder or get it back together at the very least. Or possibly I just need to open it up and clean it. I don't know. Um, hmm, interesting. Okay, so this is completely different to what I expected. I wonder if I should do that. I mean, the thing as it is isn't particularly usable. It's uh, quite annoying when you try to scroll, so... I mean, if I completely broke it, it wouldn't really be a great loss. Actually, looking at uh, through these, these holes here... I can actually see what looks like a um, couple of spring contact thingies just like in this one. So maybe it is the same design. So that would actually make sense though. If this was the uh, same basic design as these then this would just be worn out. Probably dirty. Um, hmm. So I suppose I could uh, either spray contact cleaner in this, and just see if that fixed it, 
Although it probably is like literally just worn. So maybe I will pull this one out and uh, disassemble it and just see see what's inside. And I'll probably find a bunch of dirty contacts. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna have to uh, desolder it to pull it apart. So. Okay, so some quick work with my desoldering pump later, and the uh, thing is now removed. Um, so, it's time to uh, crack this one open and see what's inside. Um, so let's just do the same thing. It looks like a very similar design. You can just uh, bend these little tabs out of the way. And I'll try to keep this in shot. <laughs> oh dear. Well, a lot of new things going on in this video, aren't there? New camera mount, new uh, new information about rotary encoding wheels. I should have could have sworn these things had uh, some sort of microcontroller in it. But hey, you know that's a bit overcomplicated, I suppose. In fact, it makes sense you'd have something really simple like a little sort of rotary switch. Oh yeah, okay. See if this will come out. There we go. Ah. Yep. This is very, very similar. Except this one just has two, two little contacts. No, it's got. Ah, no, I see. These are the um, mechanical positioning things to keep it uh, mechanized, and these ones are the electrical contacts. Um, and you can definitely see it's rather dirty in there, so I would say that is in fact the problem. This thing is literally just worn out. Yeah, if I just get that there. Yeah, I mean, you look at the look at the dirt on that. So I could, um, yeah. So let's just check that. Uh, so uh, hang on. So this has yeah that that pin there went to that one contact set. Okay, let's just do a quick check with this. So this leftmost pin should go to this uh, large area. Oops, hang on. Get that there. Okay, so that connects to there. Yep. Shouldn't connect to these ones. No. And you get a slight sort of reading. But this one should go to this set. Yep, and it does. And then this one should go to this set. Which it does. Okay, so that is pretty much the exact same thing as the other one. So that's good. So I can, in fact, just replace replace that with one of these, and it should work. And yeah, I'll use one of these because I mean, yeah, I mean, I could clean this one out and everything, but. You know, it probably is quite worn. It would make more sense to use a brand new one, so... Yeah. I mean, these these things are definitely quite, um... Can I focus on that? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of wear on that contact. I don't know how long it's really going to last. So... Yeah, clean it out, it, it may just... May just fail again too soon, so it, it makes more sense to just replace it with a brand new one. So that's what I'll do. Um, I have noticed though that uh, this one is slightly shorter. Um, the pins, so I may actually have to uh, extend the pins on this to get it up off the board far enough so that the uh, so that the scroll wheel thing is uh, on the correct angle and everything. But yeah, anyway, so. Um, I'll just uh, do that, and then we can see 
and if it does in fact actually work. But it should do, because the uh, design is uh, basically the identical design. It's just this one um, was showing a high resistance because these contacts are obviously really worn and dirty and so it didn't show a uh, direct um, connection like this one did, which is why I thought this was just some sort of shorted bit of junk. But obviously I've uh, totally confused myself with that, not knowing how these things work. Um, overcomplicated it and thought it was uh, much more much more complicated than it actually is. So anyway, well, there we go. Um, let's put this in and see what happens. So I'm just going to... Uh, well, I'm going to put this one back together actually, so I've got a uh, idea of how this works. Or should I say, I've got an idea of um, the distance this is going to need. Okay, so this one fits. Where does this fit? Fits like that. This one. Um, yeah, this one's a lot shorter. So I'm going to have to mount this. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, like this. We're going to have to have this like this. So we need to mount it so that these pins here, um, if I can just get this in the shot like this, um, to have the uh, spindle hole thing line up correctly, we want it so that these uh, outer pins in the uh, mounting bracket thing, um, basically instead of sticking through the board, they're actually flush, almost flush with the edge. Um, which also means that the data, well, the contact pins will be um, just a tiny bit too short. So I'll have to extend those with some bits of wire. Let's turn my soldering iron back on. Um, so I'm going to flatten these out because I think I'll need the extra length. Um, so we've actually got something to solder onto. And then yeah, if I just, uh, I'll just have to have it so that those are just poking through. Yeah, okay. That should work though. Because if I sit that down like that, it's not going to work. It's going to have to sit up off the board like this. And those pins are going to be just poking through the hole. Anyway. It's perfectly fine. Sometimes you have to do that sort of thing. So if I just grab myself some spare bits of wire, that's why I have a box of spare bits of wire for this kind of thing. Always very handy to keep keep uh, cut off component leads um, precisely for this exact reason. Because sometimes you have to extend things and muck around. So I'll just grab some bits of wire there. I don't think I need to extend the uh, case pins. I think those will be just long enough. Um, but who knows. We'll see. Okay, now I'm going to hold this in. If I hold that, let's see, what's the best way to do this? Okay, those go... Well... Hmm, I think it will make sense to do it on this side. So if I just clamp this in here... And then I can just solder... Solder directly onto that. So let's have a look. Throw some solder onto those pins. In fact, what I'll do is bring this up here like this.
bring that so it's sitting directly on there and then just get that like that that goes straight on perfectly fine these uh, these kind of little vice clip things are so useful Oops, got a solder bridge. It's all right. Just wipe that off. This last one there. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now just shove these through the holes. It's actually easier if they're all different lengths because you don't have to all line them up all at once. And there we go. If we have that so that it's just there. I think we've got a little solder blob on that lead in perfectly the right place just to hold it in position. So if I stick this in here... Bend this over a little bit. I think it might be a little bit too high. Just slightly. Okay, so... Let's take this down tiny bit there we go okay now okay I think I need to crop these pins Cut these leads off. And then test fit it in the case. Just to check the height. Because it all... Uh, height will be determined by how this fits in these standoffs. So that should be able to click down, it does. And this should be able to spin freely in there, so pull this up just a little bit. Um, yeah, so there we go. That seems perfect. So if I just, uh, yeah, these are just barely sticking through like you can see there, but if I just uh, have that position tell you what, let's grab it with this and uh, I should be able to solder this in so if I just do that 
It's not ideal, but it should work. Would really be better to extend those if possible, but yeah, I don't know. It should be fine enough. I mean, most of the uh, mechanical strength is provided by these little standoff things anyway, so this won't see much strain, as far as I can tell. And I'm obviously do the pins really quickly, so I don't remount the solder on those legs I added. So do that fast. There we go. That should be working. Yep, that's structurally pretty good. Does it all fit together? Yep. Looks good. So, yeah. Um, Let's put this mouse back together then. And, uh, well, actually, let's just use it without the case on because it should still work. And um, we can plug it in and see if it still functions and see if now the scroll wheel actually makes sense. Okay, um, so I'll just uh, switch back to the other camera and we'll see if it actually functions on the computer. I think what I'll do first is just uh, plug it in to this power adapter here and uh, just make sure it doesn't blow up or anything. Let's see. Oh, got a light. Lights up when you move the mouse, goes off. So it seems like everything's still working. Um, nothing's going up in flames, so should be alright. Okay. Let's uh, try it on the computer now. Um, I'm just going to take this over here. And let's see. The recording suddenly stops when I plug this in, you'll know it uh, crashed my computer or something. Um, okay, so what have we got? Uh, find the front USB ports on this case. Okay. Plugged it in. Get a red light. That's good. Let's get this junk out of the way. Okay, does the cursor move? Well, yep, there we go. Uh, you should be able to see that. Um, hopefully, cursor is working now. I can use these micro switches with my fingernail. Um, you got a data sheet. So I can right click. Yep. I can middle click. Can I scroll? I can scroll. Look at that. Um, hopefully, that's not too washed out. But there we go. Scrolling is possible. Goes up. Um. And it goes down. And uh, seems to be working uh, pretty well, actually. There's no weird jumpiness. So I would say... That is... That is fixed. That's pretty great. Um, so there we go. That's, uh, <laughs> that's certainly... Um, the video certainly took a completely different angle, a uh, completely different path to what I expected it would do. Um, yeah, I, I totally had this idea that these things were integrated with LEDs and some sort of IC and serial data. No, that's too complicated. Just simple three position switch thing, basically. Well, three contact switch with um, four or five different positions and a thing. Yeah. So really, really simple, really basic. And there we go. So, yeah. Not the best, uh, not the best component though, I guess, because yeah, you can see they uh, wear out, go dirty. Um, I like the, uh, yeah, I like the um, original ones. I've got, I'll show a photo of one in an older mouse of what I mean, but yeah, the original optical ones, those uh, 
Those are much better, I would say. Wouldn't wear out at all because it's all optical, no contacts to wear out, nothing to get dirty. So yeah, um, not the best design, but hey, there you go. You can buy them for nothing, next to nothing on eBay. Dollar, two dollars for five or something, and uh, yeah, works pretty well. So I guess the uh, I guess the only concern is whether the uh, physical size like I said these two are uh, this one is slightly taller than this one so like I, I showed you had to extend the legs um, a little bit so worth uh, taking that into account um, specifically that um, other than that the contacts are all the same pinout um, yeah I'm not really sure how you'd check that very easily without just literally taking the original one apart because it was um, hard to tell otherwise. I don't think from the outside you could really check that easily but especially if it's faulty I mean like I saw the high resistance measurements I measured before of about 2k was obviously going through all the dirt and, and junk on the on the contacts so it should have actually probably showed zero ohms when I um, rotated it, but it was showing nothing, so, yeah, that's obviously why it wasn't working properly, but, um, in terms of figuring out the pinout, it's, uh, probably the easiest way is just to open it up and just have a look, but there we go, these cheap ones you get on eBay, that's what they look like inside, that's the pinout, um, so yeah, if the one you've got matches that, and the, uh, physical dimensions are close enough that you can fit it in, or do some modifying, you know, you could cut the legs down a little bit shorter if you needed to, or extend them out a little bit if you have to. So that's nice. Got my mouse fixed, and uh, learned a whole lot about these things, cheap rotary encoders, and how they work, and all that. So, uh, yeah, hopefully um, the camera angle of the uh, <laughs> the other camera was not too bad. Um, hopefully it was uh, useful, fun to watch, and uh, hopefully yeah, hopefully it's informative and useful and fun. And I certainly found that quite informative, because I uh, had no idea that these uh, were like that. Simple fix. If your scroll wheel's being a bit weird, um, possibly if it's an optical one, it's got dust in the in the wheel or between the LEDs somewhere. Um, and if it's one of these ones, then the switch is probably just worn out, especially if it's an old mouse. So have a look on eBay. Um, I'll put a link in the description to basic search idea for how to find these. And yeah, let's have a look and uh, you might be able to fix your mouse quite easily. I mean, this is not a usually interesting mouse. It's very basic, obviously, so um, not a big deal. But maybe you might have a quite a funky mouse that's got cool side buttons or funky LEDs on it or, you know, it's a really nice, comfortable shape or something and you might want to fix it um, and not actually throw it away and have to buy another one that might not be anywhere near as good. So yeah, um, do not lose hope. It is entirely possible you can fix your scroll wheel. Um, also, the uh, micro switches for the buttons also tend to wear out after a while as well. So it's another thing you sometimes have to replace. Um, but obviously that's just a switch. So that's a lot easier. There we go. Weird, wacky mouse rotary encoders. Hmm. Pretty fun. All right. I'll hopefully uh, do a video. Um, about my holiday, possibly, um, coming up, if I can figure out how to composite all the dodgy footage I took <laughs> and come up with something that's uh, plausibly interesting. I don't know if it will be, but uh, yes, yeah, so it might come out uh, next week, possibly, if I can think of how to do that. Otherwise, um, I'll probably see some more electronic stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I'm back, and hopefully I'll be back. Um, next week as well. I'll see you next time.